Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blog. Today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic with one of our uh, machine learning experts. Uh, Lon, can you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, hi, Todd. Thank you very much for having me. My name is Lan Wu, and I'm working at the Foreman Engineering Team at VMware for eight years. And over that time, I work on multi different uh, software solutions like VMC, VDI. And right now, uh, my primary focus is on machine learning, AI infrastructure uh, on vSphere. All the stuff that you've, that you've done that I've heard about over the last years has been really, really interesting. The whole machine learning uh, area is obviously very, uh, very hot in the industry. Everybody wants to, to, wants to do machine learning in all these different uh, ways. So what are we going to be talking about today? specifically using machine learning ai workload in uh, vSphere uh, with nvidia ai enterprise and uh, we will go into some of like use case that help customer to choose better option uh, for for their workload awesome so they can make sure they're getting uh, the best performance by using the right the right options yes all right so i think you probably got some slides to share so let's um Let's bring those up and get started. We will discuss uh, on how to choose the right VTU profile for your uh, workload, specifically on machine learning and AI workload. The differences between two options, VTU and, and MIC. Um, and then uh, we will have three different set of experiments that to showcase uh, the benefit. Uh, as we can see, uh, two traditional option is VTU profile. Then we have uh, an other option enabled in, in this field platform, which is called multi-instant GPU. What is their differences and how they perform and uh, what should uh, you choose for, for your uh, particular use case? In case of A100 GPU, enable up to 10 VM per, per physical GPU. And uh, with this option, memory is equally uh, partitioned among um, VGPU. Uh, for example, uh, with A100, 40 gig of memory, we can have 10 VM and each VM can have 4 GB uh, per VM. On the VM, we'll share the GPU resource based on time slicing. In case of MIC, which is multi-instant GPU, it's allowed up to 7 VM per GPU. Similar to VGPU memory, also it partition among different VM sharing the same physical device. In terms of compute, it's not based on time slicing, but it also partition the compute unit inside the GPU among VM as well. And it's leading to some differences in terms of how workload is shared. With VTBU, because it's based on time sharing, uh, it will allow to use entire compute resource and other VM are waiting for their turn to execute. That is very different to the mix because of compute is equally partitioned among VMs. So uh, each VM uh, run their workload will be independent to each other. But the amount of CUDA core allocated to each VM is, will be uh, divided by number of VM. For that reason, the compute resource per VM is less, but they can allow to independent execute to, to the other. So don't have to wait all the VM for their turn. Okay, cool. So that's a very important distinction. Thanks for uh, explaining that. Yes, hey, Todd. Looking into how uh, MIC and VGPU differences when resizing number of uh, virtual machine learning ML AI workload uh, per GPU. And in this case, we have make with VGPU, uh, we scale from one to seven VM concurrently and each VM using uh, MIC 15C profile. In the, the other case with VGPU, then we also have similar uh, configuration uh, and uh, we use the 5, 5C profile, which is also 5GB memory. We run uh, our experiment on um, Dell hardware platform uh, with A100 GPU and using ESX uh, 7.50 U3. Okay. Here's the result when we're sizing from 1 to 7 VM for a training workload. In this case, it's Masca CNN workload. And you can see for the normalized training time here, the blue bar is VGPU and the green one is MIC VGPU. For one VM here, we can see there's some differences uh, in terms of uh, performance between uh, two options. Uh, but it's, it's very small in case of one VM, but when we're sizing with more and more VM, the gap between VGPU and MIG VGPU uh, get bigger. Overall, when we scale more VM per GPU, MIG is from 4 to 80% better in terms of training time. 
and we observe similar option when we compare the throughput. In this case, we use uh, for mass and we use BASA, which is a lightweight workload. Do the same set of experiment, but for different workload. In this case, is machine learning inference for uh, Masca CNN. We observe similar impact uh, in which that MIC provide better performance uh, up to uh, 129 inference time and uh, up to uh, 127 in terms of throughput, better compared to uh, VGB options. Should we choose MIC for my workload? Yeah, I mean, so based on, on what we've seen, I, it looks like MIG mode is the way to go. And um, maybe you should just use it all the time, is, is what I would gather from the last couple of slides. Yeah, that's also the, the very first impression that should go with MIG because it, it provides very clear, better choice. But let's go to the sum up next setup experiment. Okay, let's see. Let's see what the yeah. other tests look like. In this setup experiment, we do not in sizing number of virtual machine per GPU anymore, but we sizing the workload, which is we uh, run different uh, set of workload with different characteristics. And in here, we use the same mask CNN uh, for easy comparison, but this workload run and utilize GPU is very different. For the lightweight that you use more like batch size, less compute result. Uh, and for moderate and heavy load, then it use uh, bigger batch size. And in the heavy load, that it use batch size is eight fully utilized GPU. And also because number of different uh, batch size per workload it enable more VM to run the same workload. So we set the experiment in the way that try to stretch the GPU as much as possible, so that like lightweight workload we have more VM heavy workload, we have a single VM. And because of that, then the tie up VGU profile or MIG profile is also different based on the of memory uses of the workload. And here's uh, the result for training machine learning. And you can see also in the blue bar is VGU and green is MIG with VGU. Here, the result is a little bit mixed uh, between uh, VGU and MIG. In case of light and moderate workload, you can see that when compared to normal light training time, then VGPU perform not as good compared to MIG, MIG perform better. But when we have the heavy workload, which is uh, stressful in using the GPU resources, VGPU perform uh, a little bit better compared to MIG. Uh, and we see a similar result for throughput in terms of light and moderate workload and MIG better for heavy uh, workload than a VGPU better. We do the same set of experiment for inference workload and we see similar impact, light and moderate workload, mid better and heavy workload and VGU slightly better. It's not on the case that we should choose mid, but in some case that VGU can make a little bit better choice for your situation. Let's go to the next set of experiment. We ran tire workload, not just uh, heavy in compute, but also uh, I.O. intensive. And we choose IP6 uh, workload, which is a, a network function virtualization application. We run this workload uh, with, from 1 to 7 VM concurrently and using 5C profile for VGU and um, one 5C profile for MIC, which is the same amount of memory utilized by each VM. And here you can see the result is a little bit like contrast to previous setup experiment that uh, we showed. VGPU, in this case, we see consistently perform better compared to MIG VGPU. The performance that we uh, measure here is a throughput uh, GPS, and the higher, the better. And for this type of workload, and we see VGPU consistently perform better uh, than MIG. Yeah. And uh, you can see we go from the spectrum that make better on the time to the case that like make better than some K and VTVU better and, and the other K and this K that like VTVU is the winner for most of the like, tests that we have. Then uh, it can go to some of the conclusion that we have for our presentation today. Based on our observation and our test with MIG, we observed that for lightweight workload, uh, MIG is the better option because it provides better performance when you have more VM per GPU, which also means provide a uh, higher consolidation and reduce the inf MLAI infra uh, cost. For heavy workload, the difference is not too huge between VGPU and, and MIG. Uh, but we still observe VGU slightly better in terms of performance. For the workload like network function virtualization, which both uh, compute and I.O. heavy workload, then 
which view is um, a way to go. In case of when you don't know uh, what the word loss characteristic of your application, then we recommend that test with two options and based on this, then choose the right one. Wow. So yeah, this, this is really great uh, information. And I think uh, customers will be able to use this to uh, make better decisions and optimize their performance uh, when using uh, either vGPU or, or MIG mode. Um, is there any uh, additional resources that are out there that we need to link to um, that, that customers can get further information on this topic or similar topics? We uh, recently uh, published a blog and white paper on the same topic, and you can find it from uh, VMware Performance blog series, and I, uh, it will give you more insight on our experiment, uh, more guidance on how to choose the right profile. Okay, excellent. So yeah, we'll include those links. Uh, Lon, thanks for your time. It's been a really great uh, chance to learn a little bit more about this. And I uh, hope to see everybody on the other episodes of the Stream Performance Series as well. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Nice to talk with you. Yes.